Hi, Bob from Pinegrow here with another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to implement some selectors on your page that will allow users to change between light and dark mode, plus change font size for readability. This can be very useful if you envision that some users of your site might be colorblind or suffer from some other vision problems. I'll be using a page that was largely put together with CSS Grid, so I'll be doing a little review along the way. You can download the project from the link below the video or on the original tutorial page. It contains three different sets of files. One that has no styling whatsoever, so you can kind of challenge yourself putting it together from scratch. Another that has all the styling but no selectors added to the page so that you can follow along with this tutorial. And then finally, the end product. Let's get started. So let's just have a little review of what uh, we'll be end up building and how it was put together. So here's the page in light mode uh, with the font size set to normal. So we can change it to dark mode simply by clicking on there. Notice I have clicks turned on. If you don't, you'll have to hold down Alt in order to work these controls. You can see that a couple of things change. So this goes from sort of a bluish text with a gray background and a white sidebar uh, with uh, slightly uh, more transparent, smaller text here to a uh, dark background with white text a black sidebar uh, and the tint or transparency of the text changed uh, for this smaller text. And then we can choose to make the font smaller or make it really large. All right, let's take a look in this video at how that grid system was put together. The main grid has been applied to the body element. We can look at this by clicking on that element and then clicking either Command G or Control G, depending on your operating system. And that will pop up the CSS grid editor. So this grid is fairly simple. It's got four columns. The end two columns, this one and this one, are basically margin. They keep a little bit of padding to the side of the page. So uh, for the left side, I've selected 30 picks. Uh, that's going to be a fixed margin. On the right side, I set 10 view width. Uh, that is going to uh, basically get larger uh, when you have a, a larger size screen. Uh, so it's a little bit dynamic. For the center area, uh, I added two columns one at one fraction and one at four fractions. So basically the browser, when we load things in, will first subtract away the 30 picks and the 10 view widths, and then it'll split the rest of the remaining viewport into five fractions. And then it will assign one fraction for this column and four fractions for this column. I'm using uh, two different rows. One uh, on the top for navigation, I've set with a min max uh, and it's cut off here. If we go to the styles panel, we can see it. Uh, the uh, here, the min max for the grid template rows is 60 picks and auto. So what that basically says is that at the very minimum, we want this navigation row to be 60 pixels high, but if we add content to it, for example, if we increase the font size, uh, we want it to expand uh, to whatever maximum is necessary to encompass that uh, content. And then the final row down here, uh, we set to auto and a 10 pixel gap. I then uh, went ahead and gave made these into named areas. And remember, we can do that simply by clicking here and then typing whatever we need. If we are wanting to select uh, a already included area, we can double click. That will pull up our already named areas and we can select to, for example, uh, extend the recent over into that side margin. And of course, we don't want to do that. So again, we'll double click 
and then remove that area name. So the sidebar is going to just take up one fraction and then the recent uh, tweets or woofs are going to take up the uh, rest of the area. Now if we close this down, go back to the tree panel and look, we can see that the overall DOM tree is uh, in three portions, nav, which is this section up here, the uh, sidebar and the woofs. And uh, for each of those, I've gone ahead and assigned them to particular named area. So if we just look at the nav, uh, go ahead and turn on our helper menus, uh, and then we click on this, we can see that it's under the set named area, it's set to navigation. So it will automatically move to that area on the, on the grid. I did the same for the uh, sidebar, uh, assigning that again to the named area and the woofs to the recent. One thing that I haven't touched on in past tutorials looking at grid is the fact that grids can be nested within each other. So in this case for the navigation to get the logo, the links, and the mode switcher and the font switcher into different areas, I've divided this up into a grid. So if we just go back to here, click on the, uh, the attribute grid attribute editor, and then select edit item grid. We can bring up this uh, grid for the navigation area. Uh, and uh, as I sort of outlined, and if we look in the tree, we can see it. We have an area for the logo uh, here at the beginning, a larger area for our links. So that's set to three fractions, a uh, one fraction wide column for our mode switcher and also a one fraction wide column for our font switcher. Uh, and then I went ahead and I made this column or excuse me, this row one fraction high. And basically what that's telling it is that it should take up the entirety of whatever the parent grid assigns uh, to the navigation. Okay, now let's take a look at the sidebar. So I'm just going to close that down, close this down. If we look at the sidebar, basically it is a series of divs, each of which has a paragraph with a small modifier as well, or a small element, as well as a uh, full size paragraph, and then an HR to break between each of them. And we'll come back later to how we're styling that using the small tag in order to give it a different look depending on what uh, type of mode we're in. The final area of our page is the woofs section. So if we go ahead and click on that and uh, look at the grid, uh, we basically have a grid that has two sections, an auto, section, uh, an auto column, and a seven fraction column. Uh, so the seven fraction column, of course, is going to be the, the large woof uh, along with the woofer's name. And the left with the auto content is going to be an image of the woofer. In this case, we know what the size of all our content is going to be. So we can actually set this just to auto for the, for the row height. We can also add what's called auto rows. Um, and those are basically uh, going to be constrained. And if we double click, we can see there's a couple of different selections here. There's also one, we can also type into these input boxes. In this case, I've I've typed in min content. So basically that's going to uh, make our row the same size if we had content of all different sizes as our smallest content. Uh, probably the more useful one here would be max content. Uh, so that makes the row the height of whatever our largest piece of content is. This is really useful for when you have, say if you're 
bringing data in from an API or you're somehow filling that with content that you don't know ahead of time what the height's going to be. So just to show you how you get to those. So if we get rid of that and close this down, then reopen the item grid, you'll see that that's gone. We get to that through this little bit of text here. If we click on that, that brings up our auto columns and auto rows. And I'll leave it up to you to read up on those if you're interested. That is the basic setup of the page. I want to switch now to looking a little bit at some code. Uh, so if we look at the uh, body tag and we go into our styles panel and look at the rules, we have some interesting rules. Uh, so within the body, uh, I'm going to want to change, of course, the background uh, as well as the text color. And so the way I'm going to do that is I've set up two rules. One, a background with, I'm just going to highlight this really quickly, a background with a value of RGB parentheses var parentheses dash dash bkg dash color close parentheses close parentheses uh, and you can see this you can just type it right into the input box but what the heck does this mean so what this means is that when we want to add a color to the background uh, it's going to look for a css variable var that has a name of dash dash bkg dash color and then it's going to assign whatever it calls back from that to uh, an RGB color selector. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing with the text color. So if we scroll down, we can see that it's RGB, uh, open parentheses, var, asking for that CSS variable, open parentheses, dash, dash, text, co dash, color. So a uh, variable with the name text color, and then close parentheses, close parentheses. So what this is going to allow us to do later on, as I'll show you, is just make changes to the body element and add in variables uh, depending on what the uh, color mode is to change what the values that get delivered to these two property value sets. So if we look, the other thing we wanted to change, as I said before, is the background uh, and text color in this sidebar. So if we go back to our DOM tree, select the sidebar, go to the styles. So for the sidebar itself, again, uh, right here, we're using a variable to populate our RGB. Uh, and this time it's called dash dash section dash color. A kind of neat thing that you can do, and I'll show you how when I add the mode editor within particular sections is uh, you can also, whoops, I turn off clicking. You can also use uh, your variables to get kind of creative. So in this case, to make that text a little bit transparent, a little bit uh, faded, like they do on some other site that looks a lot like Woofer, I think they might have copied me, uh, is instead of using an RGB, you can use an RGB A. And then for the variable, you can pass in your RGB numbers but then add a comma dot seven that will uh, give a slight bit of opacity uh, to our text, make it look a little bit different shade. Just to point out, and I'll go back over this later, uh, in addition to RGBA, you could use HSL and HSLA colors. You can also use both six digit and eight digit hex colors. The eight digit hex colors add alpha, just like RGBA and HSLA, but they aren't supported in all browsers right now. I think it's something like 92% of browsers. In addition to changing all of this, you'll notice that at least with the color change or the mode change, there's no change to our navigation. However, there is a change to our navigation when we change the overall font size. And so let's take a look at that. If we turn this off again and go to uh, our logo, we can see that our logo font size is actually being set as an EM. This EM means that it's going to derive the overall or the end font size based on the nearest parent. In this case, um, that's going to be the body. 
And so whatever font size is set on the body, this will be set to basically 1.6 times that. And so this, this is a good way to uh, make changes throughout the page. The rest of this navigation, I'm keeping pretty much uh, the same. Uh, so my margins, I'm keeping the same. My heights, I'm keeping the same. So in most cases, we can use either PIX or RAM or M. In this case, PIX obviously wouldn't change size when we changed our control up here, the way I've got it set up. And REM actually takes its font size from the HTML element. So that can be useful if we are making sure that our text is increased in size if the user has a vision impairment and has set their browser to be higher than a normal 16 pixel default. But in this case, we're deriving it from the body and we're actually going to make sure that our body font size then derives it from the HTML in case the user has increased their base font size. And with that, I think I've given you enough information that if you're up to the challenge, you can recreate this, this panel from the starter file, the woof-start.html file that I've included in the download. If you'd rather, you can just barge ahead to the addition of the mode switch and the uh, font selector, in which case I recommend that you start with the woofer tut.html file that already has the styling but doesn't have the two selectors. So that's it for the page overview. As you can hear in the background, my little woofers are getting a bit rambunctious, but let's dig into how we can make it modifiable by the user in the next video.